Okay, and we're back. In this video, we're looking at problems from section 5.2, uh, which is where we started looking at trigonometric functions and their values at certain angles. And there's a certain set of angles uh, that I recommend that you memorize. Um, and so I'll go through uh, those angles, uh, and I'll, I'll put those first. Uh, and I'll go through several other angles here um, and fill out a smaller table than what I'd ask you to fill out. Uh, I'm going to give you something to do with this. Okay, so it's uh, it, it really is worth your while to go through this because this this makes having these values memorized or well known to some extent um, it really speeds up really speeds up trig problems uh, right I, I think I told you in lecture a couple times ago that you should just be able to answer these questions like like in a, in a split second pretty much um, so here we go so so I said I'd put these first so so for angles 0 pi over 6 pi over 4 pi over 3 and pi over 2 these are the ones that I suggest you have memorized and we'll go ahead and we'll do a couple others so let's see negative um, it doesn't it doesn't really matter here so let me pick a, a third a fourth and a sixth so negative two-thirds pi, that's on your list. And uh, a fourth, so negative pi over four. And I said a pi over six, so we'll do a different one, five pi over six. Okay, so for these ones, the big hint is you need to find the reference number first. Okay? And then you need a reference up here, because these are the reference numbers. Okay, these are the these are the reference numbers that are very common. Yeah, actually pi over six, pi over four, pi over three. Zero and pi over two are just bonus. Okay, so let's fill it out. Um, the sine of a trig, uh, sorry, the sine of an angle tells you the y coordinate on the unit circle. Cosine tells you the x coordinate, and tangent tells you y over the x coordinate. I'm not going to list cosecant, secant, and cotangent. They're just the reciprocals of these. Okay, so I'm not going to list those out. Uh, for zero, what is the y coordinate? An angle of zero, uh, we haven't gone up at all, so we're at a height of zero. For cosine, we're still over at one on the unit circle. Let me draw this over here. For an angle of zero, we're, we're still right here. We haven't gone anywhere, so we're still over at one, comma zero, and we haven't moved up at all. Tangent is zero over one, so this is zero. Uh, pi over 6, so now we're right here, more or less. Actually, that's not quite right. Let me... Sure, that's closer. Pi over 6, so we've moved up. Um, so what is the height here? Well, this is 1 half. Cosine is root 3 over 2. And tangent is the fraction of those two things. So how is this usually written? It's usually written as root 3 over 3. If you do the simplification, it's 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. The 1 halves cancel, you're left with 1 over root 3. So this is just root 3 over 3. That's usually the way it's written. For pi over 4, we're, we've moved up just slightly. We're exactly halfway in between this right angle, which means the x and the y coordinates are the same. And they are both root 2 over 2. This is the easiest tangent value to find because root 2 over 2 divided by itself is just 1. Pi over 3. Just a little bit further. Pi over 3 has the same uh, complementary angle as pi over 6 has here. So these two share some symmetry. Uh, they're a reflection of each other across that line y equals x, which means the y and the x coordinates have just switched place. So for pi over 3, the sine is root 3 over 2. It just switched places with that. And the x coordinate just switches places with this, so it's 1 half, which means the tangent is just the reciprocal of this one here. Before it was 1 over root 3, so now it's just root 3. 
Okay. Um, next angle is pi over 2, so we're all the way straight up here at the point 0, comma 1. So the sine, well, that's now 1. Cosine is now 0, and the, res the uh, fraction 1 over 0 is undefined. Okay. These Uh, these, which I will now box in green, are the ones that I suggest you memorize. Okay, especially I'll box these twice in green. Especially these ones. Okay, I didn't. I didn't. Box twice the pi over three. Why? Because it's it's just the same as those, right? I say memorize those, especially because these are such commonly used angles. Um, if you have those ones down, you get it's going to speed everything up, everything. So here we go. Um, for these, now the whole point is to figure out the reference angle, which is going to be one of these guys. And then you know, based on which quadrant these things are in, um, uh, you know the, the sine, cosine, and tangent. So negative 2 pi over 3. If we think about that, pi over 3 goes down, so 2 of them goes over here, and 3 of them is a full way around the circle. Right, so pi over 3. Pi is all the way over here. Negative pi is over there too. So this is negative 1 third pi, negative 2 thirds pi, negative 3 thirds pi, right? So we're right here. So what, what's the reference number? What's what's left over? It's the, it's the smallest angle that gets us to the x-axis. So that's pi over 3. It's always the positive version of that. Which means the x and the y coordinates of this angle are the same as the x and the y coordinates of our pi over 3. Uh, that was pi over 6, pi over 3. But they just have different signs. So here we go. We'll just copy them down. Pi over 3. We look up here. It's root 3 over 2 and 1 half. But what quadrant are we in? We're in quadrant 3, which means these are both negative. Okay, that's it. Tangent is exactly the same. For pi over 3, is root 3. Okay, the, the negative signs canceled out in the fraction, so it's still negative 3, and uh, root 3, sorry. Negative pi over 4, what's the reference angle there? Well, it's the nearest angle, the smallest angle that gets us to the x axis is pi over 4. Right, so this is the same as pi over 4. In every, in every value, with the exception of maybe some negative signs. So now we'll fix those. Pi over 4 is like right here. So the x coordinate is positive, the y coordinate is negative, which means the tangent is negative. Okay, there we have it. 5 pi over 6. Now things are getting a little dicier. I'm going to erase this pi over 4 and that. Okay, so 5 pi over 6. Uh, again, pi is halfway around the circle, so we split it into six equal parts. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 6. That's 5 sixths of pi, and here's 6 sixths of pi. So here's our angle. What's the reference number? What's the reference angle? Well it's the smallest angle which gets us to the x-axis. We were just 1 pi over 6 short. So the reference is pi over 6, which means here's pi over 6. The x and the y coordinates of this point are the same as this point with some modifications of signs. So let's just copy those down. Pi over 6 gives us 1 half, root 3 over 2, and root 3 over 3. Now let's just sort out the signs. We're in quadrant 2. 
which means the x coordinate is negative, the y coordinate is positive, oops, x coordinate is negative, y coordinate is positive, and the ratio is going to be negative because one of them is negative. So I gave you lots of other angles. Um, I gave you negative pi over 2, I gave you pi, and I gave you question marks. Because really, whatever angle I give you, it, it's, it's going to be one of these well-known ones in terms of a reference number. It might not explicitly be these, but it's going to have the same reference number as one of these. So whatever I give you, your first thing should be find the reference number. I've got those sine, cosine, tangent values memorized, so I'm just going to write those down. And then I'm going to ask myself what quadrant I'm in and adjust the signs as necessary. Okay? All right. So that is it for question four uh, from section 5.2 on our study guides. This is question four. And it took up the entire page, so I'm going to have to clear it. So if you wanna, if you want this, go ahead and rewind the video. <laughs> okay. So question from 5.2. Now number five. Number five, I say list out every even odd property of the six trig functions. They're in page 414 of your book, whether it's the digital version or the paper version. Um, it's in section 5.2. So if you're in the digital version, it's in section 5.2. Uh, even odd properties. It's cosine of negative x is cosine of x. Cosine is even, so we have that property. Sine is odd, so sine of negative x equals negative sine x. Tangent, because it has a sine in the numerator and a cosine in the denominator, tangent of negative x is negative sine over cosine. So this is negative tangent of x. It tangents odd. And what do we know about the reciprocal functions? Same thing. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So secant of negative x is equal to secant of x. Sine uh, has the reciprocal function cosecant. Cosecant of negative x uh, is negative cosecant of x. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So cotangent of negative x is negative cotangent x. Okay, this is the even odd properties of the trig functions. Okay. Question six, list out the fundamental ID, uh, identities and the reciprocal identities on page 414 to 415. Um, yeah, I don't, even, I don't even know what these are, uh, right? Uh, I'm not looking at the pages, but I'm guessing these are the Pythagorean identities. What are those? Well, I sine squared plus cosine squared of any angle. You pick. That's always equal to 1. And we can adjust this to give us alternative ones in terms of uh, tangents and cotangents and cosecants and secants just by division of this original one by sine squared or cosine squared. So we can get this one. If we divide by sine squared, we get this one. If we divide by cosine squared, we get this one. We also know the tangent identity. Tangent of an angle is equal to sine over cosine. We also know that cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. And I don't know if there were others. It's the it, yeah, okay. It's it's those three trig functions and then the trig. Uh, sorry, the reciprocal identities. So I, I listed them both um, separately, but they're they're in the same table. 
So it's it's secant of theta equals one over cosine theta. It's cosecant of theta equals one over sine theta. And then these two. So these are the fundamental identities, the, the Pythagorean ones, and these are the reciprocal identities in the table on page 415. Yeah, that, that those that's all of them. Even odd properties are found right there on page 414 in section 5.2 as well. Okay, question seven. Um, sorry, real quick. It, I ask you to list these out because these are things that you should be familiar with. Especially this. Especially this and these. Okay, the even odd, you know, it's less important. Um, it takes just a little bit of thought to figure out if these are even or odd. But there's quite a few steps to get to these. The first is remembering the Pythagorean theorem. The second is remembering the definitions of sine and cosine. The third is substitution. And from there, it's division by something squared and division by something squared. So there's quite a few more steps involved in figuring out these when compared to the even odd properties. These are, these are pretty fundamental, uh, sort, of, sort of elementary properties that can be discovered soon. And these reciprocal ones, these are like just the definitions. So definitely should know these and these but these ones put less emphasis on I'd say 7 uh, it says negative 20 over 29 comma negative lost it comma 21 over 29 that's a point on the unit circle where an angle T ends so this is a terminal point for some t, some angle t. And this question asks, find cosine t, find sine t, and find tangent of t. So here we go, cosine of t. For points on the unit circle, what is it? It's just the x-coordinate, negative 20 over 29. Sine t. For points for for angles and points on the unit circle, it's it's just the y coordinates, so 21 over 29. Tangent of t, it's the ratio of sine and cosine. So it's the ratio of 21 over 29 divided by negative 20 over 29, which is negative 21 over 20. Okay, just gotta simplify that fraction. It's just one step cancel out the denominators by multiplying on top and bottom by 29. That's it for section 5.2. So I'll be back in a minute for the two questions on sections 5.3 and 5.4. And then there's just one quick question on section 5.5. Uh, might throw that in the next video just to make it one more. So I hope that helps and I'll see you in the next one.